everybody, and welcome back to part three of Acne. And today I will be going over the most important part of this, really, which is what do I do about my acne? So it's important to remember that the underlying cause of your acne really is going to drive what the treatment is. So these are just examples of some of the things to do, but there are no way actual recommendations, and it's so important to talk to your healthcare practitioner about what is most safe and effective specifically for you. So let's get into it. The first one that I'm going to talk about is food. And it's not just what you are eating, it's also what you are not eating. So be aware if you have any food sensitivities, avoiding triggers, the most common ones for acne being dairy, refined sugar, and carbohydrates. So know what your triggers are and try and avoid them while you're doing gut healing. It's also important to remember what foods to eat. So eating foods that are going to benefit you and benefit acne. So the most anti-inflammatory ones are typically omega-3s, which you can get from fish or you can supplement with. Um, lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, making sure that you're getting adequate fiber. So nuts and seeds are a fantastic source of, source of that. Um, and lots of herbs and spices like turmeric and thyme and all of those herbs that are very anti-inflammatory. Number two is zinc. So zinc is important if you do know that you're struggling with polycystic ovarian syndrome or any sort of kind of testosterone dominant issue that's leading to acne. Um, zinc helps, helps with the conversion from that nasty form of testosterone back to that, well, testosterone, the good kind. Um, so you're not getting those symptoms like male pattern baldness and acne. Um, you can get this through food with things like pumpkin seeds are really, really high in zinc, but you can also just do supplementation if you're just not able to get it through food. So the third one is managing stress, which is the most important one probably. Stress can absolutely lead to aggravation of acne. It's probably not the root cause, but it can definitely be an aggravating factor. So whatever that looks like for you, that doesn't have to be meditation necessarily, if that's not your thing. If it is, keep doing it. Um, but that can be walking, that can be exercising, that can be playing with your animal, like whatever makes you feel calmer, that's your stress management. Um, on top of that, what can be really beneficial and what I find very helpful both in my life and the life of some of my patients is adaptogenic herbs. So that's a class of herbs that helps to support how your body is producing cortisol, which is your stress hormone. So it helps to kind of mitigate the effects of stress on you physically and mentally. So these are herbs like ashwagandha, uh, also known as ruthenia, um, panax ginseng, shisandra berry, um, turmeric is actually an adaptogenic herb as well, so it depends on where you're at and if you're completely bottomed out in terms of cortisol, your cortisol is way too high, so that's why it's important to talk to a healthcare practitioner to help figure out what herbs are best for you. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video about the causes of acne, um, supporting the liver can be really important if that's where um, it's kind of a little bit sluggish for you. So there are certain herbs like dandelion or taraxacum, um, milk thistle, and then there are herbs like burdock and um, gallium that are really amazing for helping to kind of clean the blood. They're called alteratives. So doing a, a herbal formula that can help support and cleanse the liver, do a bit of blood cleansing, can be really fantastic for picking things up in terms of clearing up acne. So those are kind of the internal things that you could do to help support the root cause of acne, depending on what it is for you. Um, but you can also use topical agents to help kind of mitigate the severity of acne as well. So making sure you're using some oil cleansers so you're not stripping away your natural oils too much. And using certain oils like jojoba and tamanu that are non-comedogenic, so they're not kind of clogging the pores even further. Um, and you can do do-it-yourself face masks, masks, and I'll link that below. Um, I have a blog that gives you kind of a rundown of different masks for different people. So I really like using matcha because it's very anti-inflammatory. It doesn't clog the pores, and I can just use straight up matcha. So I already have it at home. Why not? Now, one of my absolute favorite modalities of naturopathic medicine is acupuncture. This is not something I'm recommending that you do, but 
seeking out either an acupuncturist, like a traditional Chinese med medical doctor, or a naturopathic doctor. Um, there can be disharmonies throughout the body and the meridians that are running through us. There are often patterns like damp heat that are associated with acne. And so being able to use acupuncture, which is a completely different paradigm of how our health works, to affect changes in that way is amazing. And I've seen, personally, I've seen great results with acne and acupuncture. Finally, testing. Now this isn't a treatment, but it's something to consider if you've been struggling with acne for a while and you're not really sure what's going on is seeking help from whoever it is that you, is your trusted healthcare practitioner. Any any testing done, whether that's food sensitivity testing, whether that's hormone testing, whatever it is for you, um, it's important to know where you're starting at so that you can treat it effectively and not wasting your time. Thanks everybody for tuning in for another week. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or things that you want to hear about, please don't be afraid to contact me either through my website, which I'll link below, or Instagram. And that's all for now. Bye.